All right. Good morning. Here's an update on Shoman. So let's start with the shte, the practitioner that is doing the technique. So the shte has now got his shoulders turned and going backwards. I'm going to go ahead and push him back a little further to give him a little more angle because that's where the shte is positioned. We have the left arm mostly good. Uh, it will drop down a bit here and the forearm will uh, match up with the depth that we have here. We need to get this elbow to uh, be positioned on the leg. Not exactly leaning, but it will appear that way. Um, the arm on the right is mostly correct. This looks a bit long from here to here, but the distance is correct. So it's really just a matter of putting the proper depth in addition to matching it up with the forearm and the crook of the forearm. This part here is okay for the most part. His chest is sticking out a bit too much and obviously here as well. This will be dropped back as well and then it will be molded in and put in wrinkles and so on for the dogi itself. The face will wait until the end <clears throat> and round it off and so on. The hakama, the skirt, the uh, the teacher's smock, so to speak, is not done. I had to figure out this part here because the picture of the hakama isn't exactly correct. So, or let's say it was uh, not a good picture for me to use because the wrinkles are not correct and the way the garment drops and wrinkles is just incorrect. So we had to make this up here and this is about right. I'll mold this in at some point and get it nice and clean. The head for the uke now is uh, more or less correct. Uh, if you look at the original artwork that the commissioner provided, the uke the guy that's taking the fall the uke is actually still in the air and not on the ground so this head will be underneath the arm as soon as he hits the ground he'll bounce forward a bit the, the shte will not move and so he would pop forward a bit so it took me a little bit of time to figure out that he was still in the air and that that would be the case so we have the arm out much far, or the, rather the hand and forearm is out further than the body. The body will need to curl a bit more here, and the, run, the rear will have to come out slightly, which means that I'll have to push the leg back a bit and turn it in the direction to the right. The foot, at any time, that can be put in. The depth here for the background is good because it's down enough for me to work, in addition to down enough for you to determine what you're looking at. It will f continue to round upward as we complete more of the work down here. That will accentuate the depth itself. So the dogi of the uke slowly comes in. This is a black belt here on this practitioner and the inner body, that sort of thing gets worked out a little bit further later. The kanjis on both sides are going to be put in once I've got this completely roughed out. And then the um, logo for the uh, dojo that this is for uh, will be worked out then. So I'm thinking at, the, at present that this kanji may, well, I'll talk to the owner or the commissioner and I'll determine whether this kanji should be the same height or they should be different heights or whether they should stick out or how he wants that done. This con this um, this is kanji as well, or rather calligraphy. So the calligraphy will also need to be determined as to where it sits, uh, lower, higher. Um, we'll find that out later. This is a horizon line for the tree line and We'll get trees in here, just basic trees. And then you'll have the end of the tatami here that ends around here or so, and we'll round it in. So it looks, at least in relief, it will look like um, he's standing on this all the way up to this point. All right, so 
it's for the most part pretty good to go. Um, just need to keep on it and get it done for the customer. All right, thanks.